As you can see from the title of this video, I'll be talking about something that I really don't like to talk about and even some of the people who are closest to me have never heard me mention this and um, it's because it's it wasn't like a pleasant experience. It was very traumatic. So um, I'm telling it to you because God wants me to. He does not show me the things that he shows me and he doesn't allow me to experience the things that I've experienced for me to be quiet about it. So I had to really just get over um, my discomfort with the situation and, um, you know, the trauma that I felt experiencing those things. <clears throat> so um, here goes. Um, and let me just be clear, and I might say this again at the end of the video. God wants me to tell you these things because he needs you to understand that hell is not a myth. Um, holiness is not an unattainable standard and it's also not something that is um, excusable. He's not going to say, you know what, you weren't living holy, but that's okay. You, you're still worthy to inherit my kingdom. That's not how it works. So God wants you to know, he's, he's using me to tell you this. And um, he allowed me to see this and experience this so that I can get the message to you that hell is an actual place. And um, it exists outside of time. There is no time there. And um, when you're there, it's too late. That's just where you are. And um, what happens is you are fully aware of why you're there and you are fully aware of what you should have done and while you were on earth and, and alive and the, the opportunities that you had to do the right thing and make the right decisions. So I just beg you before it's too late. Do the right thing. Make the right decisions. You know what God wants from you. And it hurts me that there are millions of people or billions of people who have to go to hell to understand that the things that they deemed important while they were alive really meant nothing. Okay, God is everything. God means everything. And we have to allow him to lead us and guide us. And we have to be willing to yield to him while we're on this earth. We have to be obedient. We have to be obedient to the voice of the Lord. So God needs you to be obedient to him. God needs you to yield to whatever he's telling you to do. And this is because he wants you to inherit um, your place in the kingdom. He wants you to get your inheritance. He wants you to be his child. He wants to be called your father. Um, he wants you to have an eternity of life and peace and joy with him. He doesn't want you to burn. He doesn't want you to be destroyed. He doesn't want you in torment. He doesn't want you in pain. He's not willing that any perish, but all come to repentance. So keep that in mind as you hear this. Um, it's not something that's long and drawn out. It's pretty straight to the point. When I was 12 years old, <clears throat> I had a favorite singer. And her name was Selena. And I loved Selena. And I thought she was so beautiful. And um, I had many of her albums. And I used to sing her songs in Spanish. Didn't really even know what I was singing. But I used to sing her songs and I used to dance around. And um, I just absolutely loved her. I, I watched the movie of her life um, several times, just over and over. And um, I was so hurt that she had passed away. And I just knew that she was in heaven. Um, I just felt like she was in a better place. I felt like she was such a good person, such a sweet person, such a talented person. And um, 
you know, growing up, I wanted to be a fashion designer and she designed clothes. And I don't think that there's any woman on earth who would object to having her figure um, sit out. I, I just wanted to, you know, have her figure. I wanted to dance around. I wanted to design clothes. I wanted to sing. So I really admired um, the life that she created for herself. And, I, you know, I just thought she was a really admirable person. And um, I thought it was really unfortunate that she had to die so tragically. And so soon she, at the time, you know, it seemed like she was so much older. But now that I'm older, I realized that she was actually really young. Um, <clears throat> so, one night, my cousin and I were in our living room. And I was 12. And we were singing, dreaming, or dreaming of you. And anyone who knows Selena, you probably know that song. You definitely know that song. And so, I'll never forget this, and I hope I don't start crying, because just thinking about it, it it's upsetting. <sighs> okay. So, um, I'm singing the song, and I'm like all into it. And I like bend over, I'm singing, and... I I hear like a voice singing so I'm thinking it's my voice I'm like ooh, I sound good tonight you know sometimes um, if you're singing or you're talking really loud you can actually hear the sound like on the other side of the room um, you know your voice reflecting from the other side of the room because you're so loud so that's what I thought was going on right and so I just look up to where I hear the sound coming from and standing there this let me tell you guys just really quickly um, the Lord has allowed me to see demons and this it's easier for me to talk about that than talk about this and I'm gonna tell you why it's because Demons are not humans. They were not born of a woman. They did not have the opportunity to receive salvation. Um, you know, I can't identify with them. But this is so hurtful because she was alive just like we are now and um, she transitioned her body died but her soul while it was in a state of death and separation from God her soul still exists her spirit still exists but she can't come back here so it's just hurtful for me to talk about um, this all of this so um, I look up and I see her standing there and I'm going to tell you that she looks horrifying. Um, and the only reason why I knew it was her <clears throat> was because she had on this, this purple jumpsuit. And I, when I was younger, I, I was able to like tell you about all her famous outfits. And this purple jumpsuit was very famous. It was sparkly. It had like the diamond cut out and the belly button. It was kind of like bell bottoms. And so I see her and I know it's her because of her figure and because of the outfit. If she didn't have that on, I would not have looked at her face and been able to say, yeah, that's Selena. But seeing the figure, seeing the outfit, and then looking, you can say, okay, that that's her. Um, her face. Her face. I can't even explain to you guys how her face. I'm not talking about the expression on her face. I didn't get to that part yet. I'm talking about the skin. It wasn't skin. But her, the skin on her face, it looked like it was melting. But it was a, like, 
it wasn't moving or anything. It was, it just looked like it had melted and froze in that, that place. It was indented in some areas. It was lumped in some areas. And it was, if I had to give it a color, I would say it was some type of grayish color. It wasn't grayish and tan. It wasn't grayish and brown. It was nothing like a human skin color. It was grayish. Um, her hair. Her hair, um, it looked like somebody took a bucket of, like, the Nickelodeon slime and poured it on her hair. And her hair, it just looked heavy and dirty. And it looked like it just had gook and all types of goo in it. Um, her eyes, the pupils, um, they glowed and they glowed some type of neon greenish color and um, still in her eyes she looked I mean like she looked right at me um, I looked right at her and if I can tell you guys Okay, first of all, all over, she just looked dirty, dirty like she has never washed, never taken a bath. She just looked dirty and disgusting. Um, but she, in her eyes, when I looked at her and she looked at me, she didn't verbalize anything. But she looked so sorry. In her eyes, she looked so sorry like she was full of regret she looked so filled with sorrow and she just looked like she was sorry like she just wished she didn't do the things that she did she wished she wasn't the person that she was when she was here she just looked sorry she looked sorry she looked hopeless she looked like she was void of any any good thing. No love, no hope, no joy, n absolutely no reason to smile. No such thing as tomorrow. It was just over. And she looked just completely destroyed. I mean, spiritually, just destroyed. And um, when I saw her, and I looked at her, and she was looking at me, and she would not, she would not move her eyes from staring at me. I begin to scream. Uh, I think I gasped. I screamed. I started crying and I ran and now keep in mind my cousin is in there with me my cousin didn't see it but when I screamed and I gasped my cousin screamed and when I ran she ran and she was like all hysterical and I'm, because I was so hysterical it's just like what happened and I was just screaming and crying and I think that um it was too much for me at that time um, because I suppressed the memory. I absolutely forgot that this happened to me. And then one day in my early 20s, I was sitting in the same living room where this, this um, took place. I was sitting next to my mom and I was on the computer and I was watching a video about a young lady, I think her name is An Angela or something like that. 
um, who had saw different celebrities and just had a really supernatural experience with the Lord where he took her and allowed her to see different things in the spirit. And um, when she spoke about Selena, I didn't remember at first. And then I was like, Ma, I remember seeing Selena too, right here. And I pointed to the spot because it just so happened that the couch was right next to it. And she was like, yeah, I remember. And I'm like, well, I didn't, you know. And um, she was like, I remember it. And she was like, you... Because I didn't remember anything that happened. I just remember it at that time. Okay, I saw her. And then um, my mom was like, you just kept saying for about two weeks. But why did she look like that? But why did she look like that? I don't get why she looked like that. But why, why would she look like that? And then she said, you just stopped talking about it. So, yeah, I believe my mom just told me, like, after that, you know, you just stopped. Um, and that point when I stopped is the point where my brain said, this is too much for you. You're not going to remember this. And so at that time, I, um, it was a lot when I actually remembered it all because when you have a suppressed memory, it is, it's not just oh, I remember, it's you relive. Your brain brings it all back all at once. And it's like you're seeing it and experiencing it and those feelings happen just like they're new. And um, it was bad. It was bad. And it definitely, you know, put the fear of God in me um, at that point in my life because... I was starting to take God more seriously because I had been backsliding and then getting it together and then backsliding again. And this time, I had a feeling that I had to get it together. And when I remembered that, I really, really needed Jesus because you can't handle seeing things like that and knowing things like that exist when you're not grounded and rooted in Christ. So... I, um, you know, I definitely clung to God um, after that. And I never understood why he chose to show her to the other young lady, to me, and maybe to other people. I don't know. I was wondering what it is about her when there's so many people who have passed away that, um, you know, would make him show her in that state. Um, so I'm going to tell you a couple of things. Um, the dirt that was on her, it represented the spiritual condition that she was in when she passed away. A lot of the times when we see celebrities and we see people who we deem to be so beautiful, we're seeing them physically. But God is looking at people spiritually. And spiritually, a lot of these people are deformed, horrifying, and filthy. And, um... There's actually nothing that is truly beautiful, admirable about them because they have not followed the way of our God. They have chosen to oppose him. And um, while superficially they may have all the features that us humans deem to be nice and desirable, but internally, when you look at them spiritually, when God sees them, he sees someone who is filthy. And that is indicative of the fact that they never allowed themselves to be washed with the blood of Jesus. Um, I just ask that you, you don't follow celebrities. Don't allow yourself to be influenced by... Um, people who don't love God, who don't explicitly follow his scripture, don't um, pick up their trends. Nothing that they create <clears throat> will, 
was inspired by the Holy Spirit. So if it's not inspired by him, then we know that it is, um, we know that it is demonic and it can look harmless. It can seem harmless. It can feel harmless. But, um, when you look at the influence, when you look at its influence and the spirit behind its innovation, you see that it wasn't godly at all. And, um, a lot of the things that we deem to be cool and acceptable and the things that are trending are absolutely in opposition to God and his standard for us. So again, I just beseech you not to follow these people. I don't care how nice they look. I thought surely that since she was married, she um, should have went to heaven. But there's so much more to your soul salvation than um, abstinence. Your character, the fact that uh, do you have any bitterness in your heart? Do you have any resentment within you? Even though you don't fornicate, are you filled with lust? Are you looking at people lustfully? Um, you know, are you living holy? Are you completely separated from this world? Can you say what Jesus said? He said, the, um, the prince of this world cometh and he hath nothing in me. Uh, I, I might be paraphrasing that scripture, but can you say the same thing? That Satan has nothing in you, you know, um, it's, it's nothing that he can accuse you of. You are living for the Lord. You have He has no interest in you. You have no interest in him. There's, there's no acquaintance between you. Can you say that? I want you to look at your life and I want you to be meticulous. I want you to be meticulous. I want you to be meticulous when it comes to holiness because you don't get a redo. When, it, when you close your eyes for that last time, when you close your eyes for that last time, and that's surely going to happen to you because it's going to happen to everybody. When you close your eyes for that last time, can you say for sure that you are going to heaven? If you cannot say that for sure, I need you to get down on your knees and I need you to make whatever changes in your life are necessary for you to get to heaven because there's nothing on this earth that's more important than the condition of your soul. Anybody who is distracting you from holiness is sent from sent from Satan completely you hear me I don't care if they if you met them in church if they're distracting you from holiness then they have not been sent from God now God will make all things work together for your good but they have not been sent from God so I, I beseech you I beg you before it's too late before it's too late turn to God there is no right age. I remember when I was younger, I used to say, when I get older, I'm just going to make sure I raise my kids in church and take them to church and, you know, do the right thing. But there was no guarantee that I would have even gotten older. And I'm going to tell you the honest to God truth. If I didn't accept Jesus by a certain age, I would have gotten, gotten killed anyway. I had an expiration date on me if I did not accept the Lord. If I would have chosen to continue to live in sin, to continue to allow Satan to rule my life, then Satan would have been, would have been able to kill me. And um, there are so many people, I don't know if you know them personally, but I personally know people. And even if you just watch the news, read the newspaper, flick through YouTube, there are so many people who are dying. And they are dying at young ages. I mean, you have 9 and 10 year olds killing themselves. Um, uh, car accidents, shootings, it's just nothing tomorrow is just not promised to any one of us okay um and we are constantly putting all of our hope in tomorrow and banking on tomorrow to get it right no get it right now show god that he matters more than whatever it is that you need to finish up tonight and he'll help you make the changes. He'll help you um, separate yourself from toxic relationships. He'll get rid of those friends who are ungodly and who are worldly and who don't want to serve him. He'll get rid of them out of your life. He will change everything if you give it all to him. So I beg you. I beg you before it's too late. I beg you in the name of Jesus before it's too late. Give everything to God because you cannot come back from hell. You can't come back and do it over. That's why these new days that you get full of mercy, it's brand new every morning. Don't take it for granted. Take advantage of it. His mercy is for you. His blood is for you. His death was for you. His resurrection was for you. He's interceding for you. Don't ignore him. Don't crucify him daily. Serve him. Accept him. You can never, there's never going to be a right time when you say, okay, you know, I'm going to wait, um, you know, until the right time. Right now is not the right time. I'm not ready. No, today, 
today is the right time. This minute, this moment is the right time. Um, God didn't allow you to watch this video because he did not, um, you know, he didn't care about you. He cares about you and he wants you to be saved. He wants you to go to heaven. He wants you to spend your eternity with him. He doesn't want to be separated you from you for all of eternity. He wants you. He loves you. He created you. And he has plans, plans of peace for you to bring you to an expected end. Okay. Um, apply that to your life. Apply that scripture to your life. Um, separate yourself from this world because this world is going to burn. This world is going to be destroyed, first of all, and worldly people are going to burn. Separate yourself from their influence. Separate yourself from idolizing these people and caring about what they're doing, who they're sleeping with, who they're pregnant by, and all these other different um, just ungodly things that they are doing constantly constantly this world is sick and this world is dying and this world is getting increasingly worse because everybody is sinning everybody is living in sin and our children are suffering for it our children don't even know what who they're seeing what gender they are they are anymore um you know um this world is dying and it's dying quickly and i just ask that you give god everything that you have now while you still have time. I think about people who are in hell and I'm like, you know, it's so sad that earth with all of its pedophilia, Satanism, um, hate, murder, all the lust that fills this place, all the evil and the temptation that fills this place, all the blasphemy that fills this place, the greed, the pride, the jealousy that fills this place, earth was the best part of their existence. Don't make this place the best part of your existence. You are only here to get there. You are only living now so that you can live again eternally with your Father in heaven. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask God, I thank you, first of all, for your mercy, your love, and your kindness who, that allowed us to see this moment and see this day and even watch this video. Lord, I pray that you convicted them wherever they needed to be convicted in the name of Jesus. God, I pray that you put the fear of the Lord into these people so that they would turn from their wicked ways, so that they would want to repent, not just now, but every day. God, I pray that you give them the strength to overcome God I pray that whatever strongholds that are on their life are destroyed in the name of Jesus whether it be lust fornication homosexuality uh, the desire to steal the desire to lie the desire to hurt and murder and argue whatever is in them God that is not like you I ask that you release them from it for good in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I come to you on behalf of my brothers and sisters God, we are weak. We need your strength to be perfected in our weak areas. Heavenly Father, we need you. We need your love. We need your leadership. We need your mercy. We need your guidance. Guide us onto this narrow road that you said only a few people will find. God, let us be that few in the name of Jesus. Help us to live holy. Help us to be consecrated. Help us to live for you. Help us to be sold out for you and for you only in the name of Jesus. Let us account everything else as dumb that we might win you, God. In the name of Jesus Christ, help us. Help us, help us, help us, Lord. And don't let this fear and this, and this feeling that we have now be a temporary one let it be lasting in us let it motivate us to to do more for you to seek you more to pray more to read more to fast more god give us understanding as we ask for it in the name of jesus help your children in the name of jesus god because we can't do this thing without you we can't do it without you. Uh, uh, begin to make the things of the world taste bitter to us and, and look evil to us. Allow us to see the spirits behind it. Uh, heighten our discernment in the name of Jesus and help us. Magnificent, beautiful, mighty, holy pure God and all the hurt that we've experienced in life and everything, every seed of bitterness that is within us, uproot it by your power and destroy it out of our lives in the name of Jesus and remove all of its fruit and destroy those things out of our life in the name of Jesus and help us, oh God. 
Cover us as we sleep. Cover us when we're awake. Cover those who are connected to us. Cover us all with the blood of Jesus and seal us with the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you take this message very seriously. I pray that the Holy Spirit allows you to understand that what I've said is absolutely true. Jesus is the way. He's the only way to the Father. And without him, you are separated. So I pray that you find Jesus. And I pray that you cling to him because your life absolutely and literally depends on it. And may God be with you. And I love you. And amen. <laughs>